TV cases. All right, are you Charles Philip Saunders? Yes, Your Honor. All right, counsel, can you announce your presence? Yes, good morning. Ryan Yada for Mr. Saunders, as well as Gary Siegel. All right, good to see both of you. And Your Honor, we have come up with stipulation to a bond amount and conditions, if Your Honor would like to hear them. Okay, well, let's talk about the uh, uh, charges first, okay? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Saunders, uh, you were arrested, and it's alleged that you committed the crime of burglary of a dwelling uh, with a uh, assault or battery as an incident of domestic violence, and then criminal mischief. All right. So, counsel, anything you want to say on the nothing follow further. cause? Uh, uh, nothing further. Uh, understanding that this is punishable by life, and he's not necessarily entitled to a bond. The state and defense have worked out an agreement. If the court will ratify it, of a bond amount of twenty-five thousand dollars. There will be no contact with the listed victim as well as his child. We'll put that on the record. I'm not sure if it's in the report. It is Harrison Saunders. Okay. He's also out on a bond, isn't he? On a criminal mischief? No, that's count two, Your Honor. Fine, oh, it is count? Ring doorbell. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Got it. All right. So, Miss. Yes, Your Honor. Bobby Kenny, go ahead. Tell me. It's $25,000 as to count one, 100 as to count two. No contact with the victim. No return, separate residences, no weapons, no firearms, no drugs, no alcohol. They do have a child with a custody arrangement. However, I'd ask that he be not allowed to have contact with that minor child while this case is pending or unless another judge modifies this IA order. Counsel, is that agreeable? It's agreeable. All right, is the victim here? No? So... Has anybody confirmed with the victim that this is agreeable? No, I've not spoken to the victim, Your Honor. Well, Your Honor, pretrial reached out to the alleged victim in the case, but we were unable to make contact, and her voicemail system was full. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to do that unless I know the victim's on board. So I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to be here tomorrow, but I've got to hear from the victim that this is something she wants to do. I mean, you have the no contact, I agree. But well, let me do it backwards. What do we know about Mr. Saunders? Mr. Saunders, oh, go ahead. Here you priors, go. what do we, we know about he priors? He has no priors. He's a pilot with Delta Airlines for about 21 years. 26 years. 26 years. He was a, he's a veteran, United States Navy pilot, served in the military for about 12 years, I believe. And he has no prior record whatsoever. There, is no, there are no priors, Your Honor. Okay, so there's no priors. So now I feel a lot better. Yes, sir. So listen, there's a, a, a no contact order we have that uh, when Judge Murphy and I were out here back in 2008, we drafted. And it's really good because Judge Murphy mostly did it. And it says if you contact the person directly or indirectly, if you return a text, you're in violation of the no contact. If they say, come and help me, and you don't send AAA and you go, you're in violation. And you'll be back here on a no-bond status probably. So do you think you could abide by that? Your Honor, I, I read the whole, that whole um, statement there that you, you, you drafted up. and I. Well, know. again, more Judge Murphy than me, but yes. yes. They do get a copy of it, Your Honor, that they have the signing open. Yeah, I know. Well, we, we, we started that process back in 08 because it wasn't clear what no contact meant. So we put it all in writing and set it out. So... Uh, with that and uh, pretrial indicating that there's no priors, I'll I'll uh, Your Honor, if I accept may, it. Um, he does have a prior arrest. Just for clarification purposes, he does have a prior arrest, but that prior arrest was um, since back in 1997. Just for clarification purposes, okay. It's a trespass, Your Honor. Madam Clerk wasn't born in 1997, so that we won't <laughs> deal with that. So uh, we're good. Did you get all the eight conditions? Yes. Okay. So we found probable cause. We set the conditions. Is there anything else? No, Your Honor. Thank you. No, Your Honor. Okay. So you still want the no contact with the minor child? Yeah, I want all that that, that we, they talked so, about. To be clear for the record, Your Honor is granting bond in the amount of 25000 count one, count two. Yes. Thank you.
Do you have any, you need any clarification? Madam Clerk will email. Just repeat it one more time so I make sure I can. Yeah, repeat it again, but slowly. And pull that microphone closer to you. That is $25,000 as to count one, 100 as to count two, no contact with the victim or the minor child to main separate, maintain separate residences, no weapons, no firearms, no drugs, no alcohol. All right. No, do not return. Yes, I'm sorry. And do not return. I apologize, Madam Clerk. Maybe excuse, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. All right. Is it uh, Louise Hurt Hurtanson Pernacion? No. Sarah Howler on behalf of Lawrence Hill. Okay. I was close. <laughs> yes, sir. What kind of felony? It's a, what? It's a misdemeanor, domestic violence. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry, felony. Felony. I'm sorry, it's a felony. I apologize. Well, it's, it's both, Your Honor. Um, okay, hold on. Let me grab it. They have two cases. Three cases. All right, so we got three cases, correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Are you Lawrence Hill? Yes. Okay. So, counsel, go ahead and announce yourself for the record. Judge Sarah Howler on behalf of Mr. Hill. Okay. So, um, let's go through these. If we can, have you talked to the state already on these? I have, Judge. Uh, okay. two, two of these cases are warrants in uh, each of those. The uh, issuing judge, it appears, left the matter of bond up to the first appearance judge. Correct. Um, it, those are the felonies. There's also apparently a new um, misdemeanor, domestic violence, battery. Um, Mr. Hill does have a place that he can reside in Brevard County. My understanding that pretrial has confirmed that um, uh, these are all the same alleged victim. Um, he clearly understands now not a good idea to have contact with that person. Uh, so with the usual condition stipulations of no contact, no return, it's my understanding the state is willing to stipulate to a $5,000 bond on the um, first case with attendant $150 bonds on each of the Okay, so let me go through those for the record. Let's 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 start with the uh, warrant on the domestic battery by strangulation, and that's the one that Judge Cranick said no contact with the victim, maintain separate residence, zero bond, but I could set it. Yes. What was the uh, state? What was the agreement on that? No objection. The five thousand dollars as to that case, you know, that's the four two six eight case. Uh, Eight zero case. Yeah. Yes, it is. That's the division eleven case. Yes, your honor. So a five thousand, and then we're going to do all the standard conditions. Yes, your honor. Uh, not on this one. No, no, on the on the niece on the one one six eight zero case that has the three different counts. Okay, well, let's back up. I'm looking at it. The four two six eight has got domestic battery by strangulation. Right. There's another count of that on another case. And three there's three counts on the other arrest warrant. So there is a second count on this. Hold on. You're right. It was a simple battery, wasn't it? That's in the 2021 MM290AW case. That's okay. No, battery. I'm looking at the 4268 case, the Division 11. It's got the domestic battery by strangulation, the F3, and then the M1 simple battery domestic violence am i missing something i don't see that misdemeanor i just see the felony on that case i see it uh i see it okay and we'll treat a subsidiary 100 dollars bond your honor okay so let's go back and then count one's five thousand count two is 100 and then we're going to have the standard conditions no contact direct or indirect with the victim yes your honor maintain separate residence uh, does he need to return for any reason? Yes, sir. No. Okay. Do not consume or possess any alcohol or illegal drugs. Do not possess or own any weapons, firearms, or ammunition. All right. And that's on the 
2021 CF 4268 case. Then we move on. Uh, oh. Pardon me, Your Honor. Um, are you, Madam Clerk, are you identifying two counts on that as well? We have two counts. I got two counts. Okay. Yeah. The uh, count two is the M1 battery DV. I'm only seeing the M1 um, in the um, probable cause. Um, on the other one? Arrest. Yeah, but that's a misdemeanor case. Correct. This is a felony case that has it. Okay. See, right here. Thank you, Judge. So I'm showing it. All right. So now let's move to the other felony case. This is the Division 12 case. And it has the uh, false imprisonment, battery by strangulation, and batteries and incident domestic violence. Is that correct, State? Yes, Your Honor. And what was the uh, arrangement that you made with the defense that you're satisfied with? To treat this as a subsidiary. All right. To do um, as to count one, 150, count two, 150, count three, 100. All right. With the same, same standard restrictions condition. as before? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And the state feels comfortable with that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And now we have the misdemeanor batteries and incident domestic violence. Treat that as the subsidiary 100, same conditions. All right. Is that good with you, counsel? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, again, probable cause on that new law violation. And then we've modified the bonds on all three. And, sir, you're going to no contact. You get a text. You're not going to respond to the text, correct? I want nothing to do with my wife ever again. Well, I, I don't want. I want nothing. I, don't, to do I, I hear what you're saying now. I'm just worried about don't. Do anything to violate your condition of your nothing to do with her. I hear you. I'm just saying, make sure you do not violate the no contact direct or indirect. No problem. Okay. All right. Thank you, counsel. Okay. So Thank Judge, you, Judge. The bond on the MM case is 150 as well. I think I put 100. Let me see. Where is it's it? 100 dollars in misdemeanor. 100 dollars. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Where are we at? Right. So we can do the Spanish now. Can we do Spanish? Spanish. Where is that? I need to call. You used to come here in person. What happened to that? You don't do it anymore? Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, I got uh, Louise. It was not Good morning, Your Honor. Carlos Morales, yeah. State Certified Spanish yeah. Interpreter, previously sworn. I'll take <laughs> Good morning, sir. And you were sworn in earlier. That is correct, Your Honor. And it sounds so much better here. Yeah. Thank you. No, much All right. So, mm -hmm. sir, we're going to use the interpreter. So everything will be in Spanish coming your way and coming back. So okay. are you Louise? Yes. Uh, her Tossin Carnacion. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Does the defendant have the headsets on? Mm. Sure. No. Hey, we're connected, Your Honor. Okay. Um, I'm going to appoint the uh, public defender to represent him. Now, I've got three cases. Is that what you're showing, counsel? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, great. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. You look at my notes here. All right, so let's, let's talk about the Osceola matters first, if we could. We have in 2020 CF 3160, we have a warrant out of... Uh, Osceola on a possession of fentanyl with a $1,500 bond. I'm sorry, it's sale in lieu of a controlled substance with a total bond of $1,500. Now, what happened to the uh, trafficking in fentanyl? What happened? Is that case still here? Yep. Yes, that's the second one. All right, so the first, the first warrant is that... Uh, Sell in lieu of a controlled substance with a $1,500 bond. Uh, we'll 
This is out of Osceola, so you will be uh, transported down there to see the judge on that. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Yo tengo una pregunta. I have a question. Okay, but don't talk about the facts of your case because the state attorney's taking notes. Go ahead. Okay. Que como yo tengo este caso otra vez y yo hice ya yo cogí este caso en el 2019 ya hice tiempo ya por este por este caso estoy en Moscú. Well, how did I get the same case again? Because I already got these charges in 2019 and I already served time on the, on the same thing. Okay. You will, when you go back down to Osceola, you'll get the public defender. They can explain it to y'all. I didn't issue the warrants. Okay. All right. So the other warrant out of Osceola is the larger one, and that is for the trafficking in heroin greater than four grams and uh, trafficking in fentanyl. The bond on that is 100,000 on count one and 10,000 on count two. So again, wow. you'll be held until you're transferred down there and then you can see the judge in Osceola to request the modification of the bond. Now the third case that we have is here in Orange County and it is a charge of possession of fentanyl. And I reviewed the paperwork. I found probable cause. Um, point the public defender to represent you in this case here in Orange County. I'll set the bond at $1,000. Do not possess any alcohol or illegal drugs. All right. Would we be able to set this at ROR in this case so we can get the ball rolling on his trafficking case? I'd rather have him. I, did, I didn't get that. On there. Stay. No objection, Your Honor. Okay, we'll do that. So we'll ROR him on this so he can get transported. It's down. a bigger problem. I agree. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Your Honor, are we maintaining the condition on that case? Yes. Okay. Don't possess or consume any alcohol. I'm going to get what? Bigger case. Yeah. I hear it. No. I get Right. I'm free. You still have a case. What else we got? Oh, okay. okay, we're gonna stay in touch, but okay. you go to Osceola because it's a bigger charge. Okay, but uh, the case here was still that? pending. Okay, so no, we'll I need to come back. You need to go to Osceola first. Yes. All right. Thank, Thank you, 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 Mr. Interpreter. So we could take care of this. Uh, that's it. Was that that's that the case? case? Okay. Thank Correct. You, hold on. Hold on. Now they're kind of looking at me. Can we just check to see if any of the Need the assistance before we hang up. Oh, okay. Can y'all hear me out there? All right. Does anybody need a Spanish interpreter? No? They said no. All right. Thank you, Mr. Interpreter. You're welcome. I'll read this for you. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Where are we at? You can find these email contacts. Yes, ma'am. It's going to be at the end. At the end. At the very end of the docket. In this case, you'll get credit. Huh? Yes. You're facing trafficking, though. That's bigger. You need to All right. Keep moving on before I change my mind. They'll figure it out down there. Bingo, bingo. <laughs> right? Go. Didn't that go? All right. Bingo, go. <laughs> uh, Four years of Spanish in high school. I today. Uh, Oh, it's weekend duty and two laps around the courthouse. For I'll that. do them. Make All sure right. it gets done. There you go. What's your name, Chief? Your Honor. Okay, well, this isn't who this is. So let's. No. Who's this? Coina Rojas. She's mental health. Where? Here? Yeah, we're gonna call it, and then they're gonna let us know if they're gonna waive it or. Okay. This is. No. This is. It's not him. I know. They said that he's not coming, so we have to call it so they can tell us. Oh, I'm sorry. Said it or it. So, uh, did uh, Indier Martinez Rojas he appear? Mental health. mental health. So, are we resetting? <laughs> or what are y'all doing on this? Your Honor, I believe with the mental health, you can appoint the public defender office provisionally, and uh, we could proceed with the. First appearance. State, you good with that? That's fine, Your Honor. Okay, we'll do that. We'll point to PD. Thank you, Your Honor. So you've read the charges, the sexual battery on a child. Yes, if we well. could waive the formal reading of all okay. the charges, Your Honor. 
All right, so I read the paperwork. I found probable cause that I would continue at a no bond status with the no contact with the victim. Understood, Your Honor. All right. Okay. No bond and no contact with the victim. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Are we here? Yes. Okay, are you Dwayne Weber? Yes, sir. How are you doing, Mr. Weber? Doing okay, sir. Okay, so I got a warrant, and uh, it's a warrant that was issued on a violation of a uh, domestic injunction. All right. And the judge, the judge said at five thousand plus, no contact directly with the victim, co-defendant, witness, and do not return to the scene of the offense. So I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Okay. All right, sir. Okay. Yep, state of 5,000. All right, Clint Chambers. So we're appointed now. You guys are we? I'll set up an appointment like a week after you step on, okay? Trying. Are you Clint Chambers? Yes, sir. Well, I got some good news and bad news for you. Yes, sir. Which one you want first? Whichever one you prefer. All right. Well, let's do the good news. Yes, sir. Me too. All right. So um, we've got a felony charge. That's a battery on an uh, officer and a robbery. Uh, no firearm or weapon. Yes, sir. I'm going to point the PD on the uh, Division 14 case to represent you. We also have a misdemeanor case uh, where you're charged with uh, simple battery. And again, the PD is being appointed. And you're out on bond, though, in 2011 CF384 for criminal mischief, petty theft, and burglary of a dwelling, correct? Correct, Your Honor. Okay. Could you repeat that case number? 2000. Oh, I'm sorry. Two. 2021 CF 5633. Um, Your Honor, I have that as his new charge. I have him as out on bond on 2021 CF 4011AO. 411 AO? 4011 AO. Correct. That's his out on bond case number, Your Honor. Okay. 2021 CF 4011 is the one with the criminal mischief, petty theft, and burglary of a dwelling that you're out on bond on. Okay, so I found probable cause for the new law charges. And I, yes, did you want to say anything? No. No. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the bonds at the on the uh, veteran law enforcement. That's 2,500, and the robbery will be 150. Uh, no contact with the victim. And on the uh, simple battery, it's gonna be $500. No contact with the victim, but on 2021 CF 4011, I'm going to revoke your bond based on your new charges, and you can have your attorney schedule a hearing in Division 11. Your Honor, I, I would just ask that the court reconsider revoking the bond in that case. The state attorney hasn't filed. Uh, it's been over 30, 33 days. Um, it, it, at this point in time, that case is in limbo because the state attorney is not even ready to move forward, I, I don't think it'd be appropriate to revoke the bond in that case. I would take it up with the judge in Division 11. Honor. We're going to leave it as is. Got All right. It. I see your bonds are both. All right, let's go with uh, we'll be in touch. Ronald Smith. Thank you. Are you Ronald Smith? Yes. Okay, so Mr. Smith, you're charged with this, uh, you know, Failure to update your driver's license based upon your previous conviction. And the judge said it at no bond. Um, it's a warrant, but I am going to give you a bond on it. All right. I'm going to point the public defender to represent you as well. So here's what the bond is. It's going to be $1,000. And you got to report to all the agencies you need to report to with changes of address and stuff within 48 hours of your release. All right. If you don't do that, they're going to charge you again. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Okay. Stevie Wilson. Stevie. 
Judge, on Mr. Wilson's case, I'm going to ask that we take no action on the out on bond. When I look at them, they're all competency issue cases. That's why there are so many of these out on bond cases. With, with status dates um, that they've had and continue to have. And I'll give an example of the 7868 out on bond case. He had a hearing March 10th. He has another hearing six months later, September 10th, in front of Judge Dubois. So they have status. Commonly status is date six months out. All of the cases that he's out on bond on? on a, I haven't, I've looked up three, but I'm gonna, I can keep looking at them. So I'm going to point to PD. Do you know if he's out on bond on all these cases? Yes. Uh, and he's having a mental health status on yes. all five cases. Uh, as far as I looked at the bottom two. So I have seven, seven, eight, six, eight, yes. Eight, three, three, six, yes. Eight, seven, one, eight, yes. Um, four, one, four, six, one, yes. And then two, one, five, five, yes. Did I miss a number? No, I, yeah. Okay, if that's the, the basis, I won't revoke those bonds. Yes, sir. All right, sir. So you've been charged with aggravated battery with a deadly weapon and possession of drug paraphernalia. I reviewed the paperwork and I found probable cause on appointing the PD to represent you. I'm going to leave the bond at 5,000 on count one and 500 on count two. You're to have no contact with the victim. You're not to possess or consume any alcohol or illegal drugs and you're not to possess or own any weapons, firearms or ammunition. Do you understand? Runner. Yeah. Um, first, Your Honor, defense would argue that it, as far as PC is concerned, I don't believe an aggravated battery occurred in this case. While it was a knife, there was no indication that there was sufficient damage done. It, to my understanding, this was someone having a mental health episode outside a restaurant throwing knives and forks at people. Someone got hit in the hand and a cop decided to overcharge it. Um, in, in light of all that, Your Honor, we'd be asking the court and I understand PTR's position that they won't accept someone with this type of charge, but if the court ordered it, he would be allowed in PTR. Uh, specifically, if we could get him into mental health PTR, I think that that would be the most helpful for him. Okay, well, I'm going to decline your request, and you can take it up with the judge in that division. Understood, Your Honor. All right, we're doing uh, okay. Another felony domestic violence. Yeah, yes. Your Honor. Are we not? Are you not taking any action on any of his um, out no. on bond cases? They're telling me it's all mental health related, and the state asked that I not touch them. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I feel that the state wants to know: Did you change your answer to the simple battery to the second matter so the defendant can qualify for free trial? They won't. They want to know if that's the reason why. In terms of the restrictions of the state, um, I mean, I just told her yes, that order stands. Yeah, just tell me what about her, whatever you need to know. And then this one, she's saying that you need to say PTR instead of all. Okay. But I say you need to have a lot of information. What were you going to say? Yeah, I think it was. Just keep it ROR. Yeah, but thanks for asking, though. I'm glad they did. All right, we uh, are we up to felony domestic violence? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, everybody out there. When the case called that you're here on, coming through that door, have an ID ready to show the state attorney so we can ID who you are as we do it, okay? So, uh, is this Antonio Hagens? Oh, what is it? It's a silver button underneath there. It's like a little pack. This one? Yes. Okay. Grab. You do it. What's her phone number? There you go. Okay. Are you Antonio Hagens? Yes, sir. I am All right. Antonio Hagens. Yeah. You're here because there was a warrant that was issued, uh, and it was the charge was aggravated battery upon a pregnant person. Yes, sir. The judge had said it at no bond, and you're not to have any contact, direct or indirect, with the victim, co-defendant, or witness. 
You're to maintain separate residence. You're not to possess or consume any alcohol, illegal drugs, or controlled substances without a valid prescription. And do not possess any weapons or firearms. We're going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Are we be asking? He, he says he, Mr. Haggins could afford a thirty-five hundred dollar bond maximum. He would have that would be stretching him pretty thin. We'd be asking the court to reduce that to a thousand dollar bond. Uh, he's informed me that the alleged victim already made attempts to decline um, prosecution in this case. Obviously, the defense will follow up with that. But in light of this information, Your Honor, we'd be asking the court to uh, reduce the right. bond to a thousand dollars. Is the victim here? No, Your Honor. Uh, have you pre-trial? Have you talked to the victim? Um, Your Honor, due to this being a warrant, we did not have contact information for the alleged victim in the case. No contact has been made at this time. Okay. Stay. I have one moment, Your Honor. I just want to see. He has other cases that we've dismissed. I just want to see if the same victim, if the same victim involved in these cases. Looks like at least one of the cases has the same victim, so state would object, Your Honor. Okay, I agree. I'm going to keep it a no bond says You can go see the uh, judge. And Your Honor, have, do we Your have two Honor, cases? Um, I, I'm sorry. The case law doesn't permit keeping him no bond. This isn't a punishable by life felony, and just because it comes in on a warrant. Um, I only have one case. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I thought the court said a bond. No. Oh, I apologize. Yes, he's entitled to a bond. I'm not trying to keep him at no bond. Okay, I just we'll, don't want to we'll, reduce we'll it. set a bond. So he had one prior with the same victim? I see at least one I didn't go through. He has other priors. I just didn't go through all of them to see if it's the same okay. victim. And you're saying 3,500? Is the maximum, Your Honor. We'd be asking for 1,000. We, we believe that the victim's going to be declining to prosecute in this case. Well, the victim's not here, so I don't know what the victim's going to do. And Your Honor, we have another case. We have a 2021 CF 5655, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, possession of ammunition by a convicted felon, grand theft motor vehicle, and possession of a firearm with all... <laughs> with the, with a serial number that's been altered or removed. I think that's so. He's out on bond on another case. No, no. I have a new law arrest. I have the warrant case, which is the DV case, and then a new law arrest. We never received the. Complaint. We haven't gotten the paperwork on that. I have a moment, Your Honor, to approach the clerk. Yeah. So you know, we'll go with the thirty-five hundred right. on this one. It's not even. It's not even listed on here. And uh, all the conditions that, that were mentioned before. Sorry, Your Honor. How much was it? 3500 Thank you, Your Honor. Can we reset him for tomorrow to get the warrant to, on the second, I mean, the arrest affidavit on the second case? Because they only put one on the list. Okay. So oh, I should be held at no bond. It's a no bond case. Warrant? He's got no bond warrant. Then we're just going to hold him over till tomorrow. We'll deal with this. And he hasn't been served with it? He was arrested for the new law, but we don't do law offense. Whatever. We're going to have you back here tomorrow morning, sir. Okay. Excuse me. If All right. Robert Kennedy. Are we resetting both cases, Your Honor? Yeah, we'll reset both cases. Yeah. What? We just addressed this point. Yes. So they're going to bring this case back again tomorrow. We just need the one that we don't have the paperwork on. That's the case that we need them. Uh huh. Because this case is already addressed. Okay. We can keep it that address, but he's bringing, being brought back on the second one. Yes. That's fine. So just. Bring him back on a second. But it was in the car? Okay, let's move on. Y'all can talk uh, later. Robert Kennedy. Your Honor, he's refused. Okay, uh, we'll reset him. Clinton? Was it Kutabong? Did I pronounce that right? Are you Clinton? Is it Kutabong? No problem, it's fine. Well, what's your name? That's perfectly fine. There's many ways of saying it. Well, what's your date of birth? July 31, 95. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you get, move the microphone closer to him? Or? First, 95. Okay, so Jill, you're confident you have the right person? Am I identified him? He has been um, positively identified with by fingerprints, Your Honor. Okay, just want to make sure. All right, sir, uh, I'm going to point the public defender. You're charged with burglary of an occupied dwelling, battery as an incident. Incident of domestic violence and criminal mischief. Your Honor, less than 200. Yeah. I would argue there's no PC for Berg occupied dwelling uh, with battery there within. Um, he was a guest. It's very clear. The father even says he was invited. He came there to help. Uh, while it may have 
turned into a trespass. He didn't go in or break into the house with the intent to commit a crime there within. It escalated into a fight between them thereafter. That's fine. That's separate charges. Those are misdemeanors. All right. I'm going to let the state respond to that. Um, no objection to finding a simple trespass is count one. You want the statute, Your Honor? Yeah, I need the statute. Your Honor. 810.09. Eight one zero one zero nine zero nine zero nine point zero nine. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Okay, and then count two is the uh, DV battery. Yes, sir. Do we know anything about the defendant? Your Honor, he does have previous convictions in 2019 for battery, domestic violence, and a battery. But due to the fact that it was a Hillsborough County case, um, we were unable to locate victim information, so it's unknown whether or not it's the same victim as his previous case. All right. Any recommendations, defense, on the bond for the battery? Uh, if we could treat it as a subsidiary, Your Honor, uh, with 500 on count one and then 100 on two, three. I don't think we can treat it as subsidiaries. That would be the highest count once we do the lesser include as to count one. State requests 2,500 as to count two, 100 as to count one. And then 100 as to count three. With a... Uh, no contact, separate residence, no No weapons. contact whatsoever with the victim. No return to the scene. Uh, maintain separate residence. You can return one time with law enforcement officer to get your belongings. Don't consume any alcohol or illegal drugs. And don't possess or own any weapons, firearms, or ammunition. And we will set count one, which is now a simple trespass at 100. Count two, battery DV, 2,500. And count three, criminal mischief, 100. Samuel Teague. We have two cases for him. Are you Samuel Teague? It's good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Good. So look, I've got two warrants. One's a felony and one's a misdemeanor. The felony case is a aggravated stalking after an injunction. The judge said it no bond, but it's it, we can set a bond here at initial appearances. And then the other warrant, it's a misdemeanor contempt of court for a violation of an injunction and criminal mischief. And the judge set the bond there, no bond on count one, but $1,000 on count two. So I'm pointing the PD to represent you. Also, the uh, no contact with the victim, uh, do not possess any weapons or firearms and abide by the terms of your injunction. So, state, any uh, recommendations on the bonds for these? Um, as to the 3096, the contempt court violation, no objection treating that subsidiary with a 150, um, no contact, maintain um, separate residences to abide by the um, injunction. And then as far as the six, 5626 case, to do a $2,500 bond, again, all the standard conditions in addition to may, um, to abide by the injunction. Any objection? Uh, yes, Your Honor. He currently doesn't have any funds. He's going through a divorce with the alleged victim in this case. Um, because of that, he can't afford any bond in this case, Your Honor. I, I would point out to the court, too, that um, that makes sense as far as the evidence in this case comes solely from the testimony of the alleged victim. There's nothing in the warrant. Uh, confirming. In fact, the law enforcement officer doesn't even say that he could make the ID through the ring camera, which I thought was of particular concern. Uh, Your Honor, in light of his financial situation, in light of the fact he's going through a divorce, there is motive for her to lie because he is going through a divorce with her. We'd be asking the court consider releasing him on non-monetary conditions of release, whether that be reporting to PTR or whatever the court deems appropriate. Okay, so I'm going to go with the state's recommendation. So we're taking the felony one from a no bond to a 2,500. Again, all this, those conditions. No contact whatsoever with the victim. Maintain separate residence. Do not return to the scene of the offense. What is it? May return one time with law enforcement to get your personal belongings. Don't consume or possess any alcohol or illegal drugs. 
do not possess any weapons, firearms, or ammunition, and abide by the terms of your injunction. And then on the misdemeanor charge, uh, I believe state, you said 150 on the count one, the contempt of court? Yes, Your Honor. And then on count two? I believe that's it. $1,000 with the same conditions? Yes, Your Honor. All right, we're at the misdemeanor domestic violence now. And I think we have... Um, Rakesh uh, Bolasking, how do you say that, sir? Bolasking. Oh, I was, I was close. Oh, you said it correct. All right, and someone is here. All right, so ma'am, if you just show your ID to the state to confirm who you are. Yes, Is the alleged victim in this case, That's, Your Honor. Is that him, Wade uh, Rupanaran? Yes, Your Honor. All right, is that you, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Are you here to talk about uh, contact and bond issues? Yes. Okay. So if you could raise your right hand, we're going to swear you in. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you God? Yes. Thank Please you. state inquire, Your Honor. Well, yeah. Go ahead and state your full name. Hamwadi Rupnarian. Go ahead. How do you know the defendant? He is my husband. Are you afraid of him? Yes. No further questions, Your Honor. Okay, so, sir, uh, you're charged with batteries and incident of domestic violence. It's a uh, misdemeanor domestic violence charge. I have reviewed the paperwork and found probable cause of appointing the public defender to represent you. Now, what were... Your Honor. I'm sorry? He qualifies for pretrial lease, Your Honor. Okay. So, um, because she indicates that, you know, she still has some fear, and, you know, we always say a cooling off period is good for everybody. Uh, we're, you're not going to be have be able to have any contact with her at the present time, either direct or indirect. So even if she calls you, you can't answer the call because that would violate the conditions. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Now, as far as a monetary slash PTR, what's he, he qualifies yes, for straight sir. PTR? Yes, Your Honor. Does he have any history? He does not. But may I inquire of the victim? Sure. On that? Um, are you afraid of? Sorry, do you mind if he is released without having to post a bond? Still no contact with you, but being released without having to post a monetary bond. As long I as... I object to this, Your Honor. That has no... Bond is not a punishment. I don't know why that is being weighed here at all, but... Well, I'll let her inquire. Overruled. Go ahead. Um, as long as I'm able to collect my belongings, because the situation is, is I'm going to be leaving the home. Okay. Um, so as long as I have enough time to gather my belongings and my children and leave, I, the bond situation is irrelevant to me. Then state would have no objection to being released without having to post a monetary bond and on street PTR, but obviously no, no contact, separate residences so that the defendant understands if she is present when he was, to, if he has to go back to the home, he cannot be there until she vacates through her yeah. own volition. How much time do you need to get out? Uh, a few days. All right, sir, through your attorney, I'm going to ask, does he have a place to stay a couple of days before he returns to the house? Brother, okay. You've got to stay away. You can't contact her. No one should contact her. You can't have he did not provide an alternate address. To I'm sorry? He did not provide an alternate address to pretrial services. Okay. So to do pretrial, is that a yes, he has a place? Yes, Your Honor. But pretrial needs an alternate address to do PTR. Yeah. Your Honor, can we get a monetary bond in the amount of $1,000 in this case? I know, but she wants to have time to get out of the place. Yes, Your Honor. So if we just go monetary and not do pre-trial, state? State request PTR. It allows the victim to reach out quickly if something does happen or occur. Can he get a hotel or something and list that? Yeah, he can afford bond. If, if he can't give them the address, then they're not going to be able to approve him. But he could afford well, a bond. Sure. Go ahead. I may, Your Honor. Uh, pretrial services was simply informing the court that at the time of interview, he didn't provide an address. However, not providing an address will not be prohibit the defendant from being released onto the program. Okay. You were just letting us know he didn't have one. So I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So you're good with straight PTR then, state, based yes, on Your what Honor. the victim said? Yes, Your Honor. So, so what we're going to do is the pretrial release... Now, remember, no contact, direct or indirect, with the victim. 
Now, uh, what are you talking about? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, when can you be out? Um, I would say by Monday. That's in like a day, two oh, days. Oh, today's Saturday. Uh, by Tuesday. Okay. So on Wednesday, you are allowed to uh, return to the home. Okay. And we'll note that, you, that the victim and the kids are moving out. Correct. Okay. But you still can't have any contact with them. But you can't do anything before then. You can't come in before Wednesday. All right? And they should be out by Tuesday. Um, you're obviously going to maintain a separate residence if you're you not having any contact with her. Uh, you're not to consume any alcohol or illegal drugs. You're not to possess any weapons, firearms, or ammunition. If you have any, turn them into the sheriff's office. Um, do you have any questions about those conditions? No. All right. Anything else, State? There you are. Vince? There you are. Ma'am? Anything else? There are minor children involved. What is the contact situation with them? Well, we have a program here in Orange County that allows for uh, contact through uh, uh, our program that keeps it monitored that you can look into. Because I don't want to abstain him from having contact with the babies. See, I don't give legal advice, but yeah. you can't have contact with him because that would violate his no contact. Correct. But I've heard if you go through a third party and they do the arranging for the uh, visitation, but also, you know, you may want to check downtown because we do have supervised visitation, but it's usually part of a lawsuit. So I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Talk to an attorney. Anything? Pearls of wisdom? State you want to pass on? No, Your Honor. Pre-trial? Your Honor, are you indicating that the court is inclined to grant third-party contact in regards to the children only? Are you good with that? Third-party contact for the children only so that you can arrange for it? Yes. All right, we'll add that in there. That's one question. You huh? told them to surrender weapons. How many hours are you giving them to Oh, within uh, 12 hours of your release, if you've got any weapons or firearms stuff, surrender to the Orange County Sheriff's Office. I don't know if you do, but just in case. Anything else, ma'am? No. Okay, sir. Don't let us down. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are you Jessica De Jesus? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there, there's no one here with you, right? No, Your Honor. Okay. So, Ms. De Jesus, um, you've been charged with batteries and incident domestic violence. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. It's a misdemeanor charge. It's not called for PTR, Your Honor. Your Honor, I don't believe she's going to have the financial means to post bond. Okay, so I'm finding probable cause for the charge. She doesn't qualify for pretrial release. It's so, objection to a two fifty dollar bond, two hundred fifty dollar bond. Okay, and uh, what conditions is the state asking for? Same conditions: no contacts, several residences, no weapons, no drugs, no alcohol, no firearms. All right, so you understand, Ms. De Jesus, that I'll do a $250 bond, but you can't have any contact whatsoever with the victim, direct or indirect. you got to maintain separate residence. If you need to return one time, the law enforcement officer will allow that. Don't consume any alcohol or illegal drugs. Don't possess or own any weapons, firearms, or ammunition. Do you understand? Yes. What if? How long do I stay if, I'm, if I can't afford it? Um, the, your attorney can bring up uh, with the judge in Division 50. I think Judge Shoemaker doing domestic violence these days. Yes, Your Honor. And he can address that. I can do a payment plan. I don't think they're up to a payment plan around here. I don't. Even, will you take Bitcoin? No. No. No, yeah, Your Honor. no uh, Bitcoin or payment plan. I yet. put myself through school. Like I literally just finished college. Like right. I'm not. I'm I hear you, but you don't qualify for the pretrial release. So we're going to set it at that, and hopefully you're going to find out who your good friends are when you need some bond money or family. All right, Mr. Uh, Terrell Gillis. 
Are you Mr. Gillis? Are you Terrell Gillis? Yes, sir. All right. Good morning. Good morning, sir. All right. You're here charged with battery as an incident of domestic violence. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I assume the victim is not here because no one's at the door. So uh, state as far as a bond amount, do we know anything pre-trial? We would state has no objection to a $250 bond and then no contact, separate residences, no weapons, no firearms, no drugs, no alcohol. Okay. Defense? Your Honor, he's not going to be able to afford $250 bond. Any monetary bond would be tantamount to setting no bond in this case. I'd also point the court's attention to the fact that the alleged victim refused to give a statement that the altercation between them got physical. While she did give a verbal statement that uh, he was, did he hit her with the bottle? Um, yeah. I would just ask the court to take that in consideration and the okay. fact that he's not going to be able to post bond as well. The concern is even ROR is his criminal history of robberies, DOC sense with robberies, resistings. That's okay, so I'm going to set the bond at $250. No contact, uh, direct or indirect with the victim. Uh, maintain separate residence. Do not return to the scene of the offense. You may return one time with law enforcement officer if you got any personal belongings at the victim's place. Do not consume any alcohol or illegal drugs. Do not possess or own any weapons, firearms, or ammunition. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah. All right, Ms. Susan Kelly. Your Honor, she's medical. All right, we'll reset. Uh, Janice Riccio. Is that a 24 hour reset? Yeah, tomorrow. Are you Janice Riccio? Yes. Did I Your say Honor. it right? Riccio. Riccio. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, ma'am, you're here on a uh, misdemeanor charge of batteries and incident domestic violence. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I reviewed the paperwork. I found probable cause. He does qualify for pre-trial, Your Honor. We have no objection, but no contact with the victim, maintain separate residences, no weapons, no firearms, no drugs, no alcohol. All right, correct. She's straight PTR on her? Yes, Your Honor. All right, without objection, I'll do that. So no contact, direct or indirect with the victim, maintain separate residence, return one time with law enforcement to get belongings if you need to, do not consume any alcohol or illegal drugs, do not possess or own any weapons, firearms, or ammunition. Do you understand, ma'am? I do, Your Honor. All right. Tiffany Shaw. You pick up a new charge, you're not going to get out. One time return, you have to be there. There should the be a victim time. present for Ms. Shaw's case, Your Honor. One time return to your item. You can't oh, go that. back to the house, no contact. And the cops will go? Yeah. No. Do not go back to the house. Oh, okay. We can change that later, but for now, no, all right? Okay. And state has verified the victim on Ms. Shaw's case. Okay, great. <clears throat> Okay. Are you Cassandra Walker? Yes, sir. All right. Are you here to talk about uh, conditions of release? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. Raise your right hand. We'll swear you in. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you God? Yes. Thanks. All right. State your full name. Cassandra Elizabeth Walker. Go ahead, State. Miss Walker, are you afraid of Miss Shaw? No, ma'am. Do the two of you live together? Yes, ma'am. Would you like to continue to live together while this case is pending? Absolutely. Were drugs or alcohol related to this incident? No drugs. I mean, it was my fault. I bought a bottle of alcohol. She, so so alcohol, that was my fault. So alcohol, but nothing else? No, no, no. Okay. If something happened in the future, would you feel comfortable in calling the police or 911? Nope. Yes. You would call them if something happened? I mean, it, it wouldn't, though. I'm going to say it was my fault. So. Okay. And if the defendant was released without having to post a bond, would you be okay with that? Yes, no further questions. Ms. Walker, you understand. I can't help you if something happens and it escalates. Yes, sir. You've got to protect yourself. Yes, sir. Secure your safety. Call the police if something happens. Yes, sir. Now, Ms. Shaw, can you assure the court that you're going to have no hostile contact with Ms. Walker? Yes. If Ms. Walker says, take the garbage out, what are you going to say? <laughs> okay. You say, absolutely. All right. Yes, sir. And so, uh, you know, this is a two-edged sword, this no hostile contact. Because if y'all do continue, 
and she gets mad at you and calls the police, you know, the police are going to come down and arrest you. So you just because there's no hostile doesn't mean you need to be in the same place with her. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So be careful. I'm, I'm working on that, Yana. I'm just saying, you know, it's like when they say, hey, take a plea or probation. It's sometimes, you know, do the time because probation can be a lot worse. They, so they say. All right, so we've appointed the PD. Qualifies for pretrial release, Your Honor. All right, so straight PTR? Yes, Your Honor. All right, is that okay, defense? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so, so what we're doing here is, remember, it's no hostile or violent contact with the victim. All right? Uh, let's not have any uh, alcohol or illegal drugs in the home, and you're not to consume any now. Let's not have any weapons or firearms or ammunition in the home, and you're not to possess or own any. Yes, sir. If you have any, get them out of the house before she gets home. All right. Anything else? No. All right. Good luck. Thank you. All right. We have Mr. Thomas. Are you Kwame Thomas? Yes, sir. Oh, all right. This is Isaac, Your Honor. Have you identified her? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, we're gonna. Are you here to talk about the bond and with yes, sir, uh, with I him? Am. All right, raise your right hand. We're gonna swear you in. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you guide? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, so Mr. Thomas, you're charged with a misdemeanor battery as an incident of domestic violence. You're also out on bond on a trespass after. Warning and resisting without Sir, violence. I don't believe he's out. I believe it was for state to return to perfect service. I'm asking you to defend for one second. Yeah. Yeah. I was explaining, Your Honor, I will make an offer to resolve the out on bond case of a withhold credit for time served. The problem is the defense would have to waive perfecting of service because that was why it was returned back in December. So if defense wants to accept that offer to resolve that case, he would need to do that. And there's a no return to the Universal Studios. Is the court going to be inclined to revoke that bond? Well, let's talk about the new charge, and then we'll talk about that. All right, so tell me, uh, pre-trial, other than this uh, non-battery case that he's out on bond, does he have any history with this victim or any other type of battery? No, Your Honor. The trespass and the resisting without that he was arrested for in September and bonded out for um, is his only prior. Okay, so ma'am, what, what's your position about contact with Mr. Thomas? Uh, I would like to continue contact with Mr. Thomas. So if I set bond at a what we call no hostile contact or no violent contact, you understand I can't protect you if he yes, comes sir, back in the home. I do. You have to protect yourself. Are there any children involved? No, there are not. Okay. And you feel comfortable if I were to allow him to come back home? Yes, sir. Now you realize he doesn't have to come back home. I, I do, but I would like him to come back home. And, okay, so I just want to make sure. So, um, again, reviewed, probable cause, point PD. So, I have a question. If he, if he resol resolves the trespass, would he qualify for PTR then? Is it only because he had the Adam Bond case? Um, his community ties were not investigated due to due to him being out on bond. I just would indicate that the information that was provided to pretrial is that the victim and the defendant are not living together. So pretrial would be inclined to speak with them again to clarify on where he's actually living. So the state has an objection to a two hundred and fifty dollar bond, or in the alternative, PTR if he so qualifies. If he qualifies, okay, good with that. Uh, Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so that's what we'll do. So it's $250 bond or PTR if you qualify it. Again, no hostile or violent contact with the victim. Uh, don't consume any alcohol or illegal drugs. Uh, do not possess uh, 
or own any weapons, firearms, ammunition, if anything like that, clear it out before he gets home. And I won't touch the bond on your other case. Thank you, Your Honor. No action, Your Honor. No action. All right, ma'am, any questions? No, sir. All right. Don't let us down, Mr. Thomas. Don't, don't let us down. Okay, what are these? Just felonies? Yes. All right. Miss Abel, is that you? Yes. All right. Miss Kaya Abel, I have a total of two cases, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. So the first one we'll deal with is the new law violation. That's the uh, possession of MDMA escasy. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you on that case. Um, let me just jump to the other case. There's a warrant on a failure to appear two counts in Division 12 on your possession of a drug and resisting without violence. The judge set the bond on that, though. I didn't. Un um, yeah. I know because know, you already told it's fine. Yeah. I Thank know. you, Your Honor. So a thousand dollars on count one and a hundred on count two, on those, and so on the new law violation. Um, I, I don't understand why we're not revoking any bonds, but let's go to the failure to appear. I believe, Your Honor, and that's the reason why instead of revoking it because she already failed to appear on it, the judge said, all right set bonds. So the bond, I'll keep the bond at a thousand dollar on the new law violation. Do not possess or consume any alcohol or illegal drugs. All right. Good luck. It's up to you to check. The uh, Nicholas Alber. Got to post bond to get out. If. Let's go. Nicholas Alber. This is an add-on he had before. Yeah. Nicholas Alber. Let's go. I don't believe it's an add on, Your Honor. <clears throat> okay. Are you Nicholas Alber? Are you Nicholas Alber? Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, you're here on charges of dealing in stolen property and receiving uh, money from a pawnbroker under false verification. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. A what? When did I get Hold these on. charges? It came in on a warrant. Yeah, it wasn't a warrant, but it was an after the fact charge. After what? We'll, we'll talk about it later. Okay. So, um, and the PD's appointed. Any uh, state PD on the uh, bond? I would leave them set as is, Your Honor. All right, I'm going to stay the bonds at 5,000 on count one, 300 on count two, and no return to the scene. Do you understand? Yep. Okay. Luis Alfonso. Sir. All right, let's move on. You're saying you went to the pond and they said that you put your print on it. All right, Mr. Alfonso, is that you? Sir? Are you Luis Alfonso? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, you've picked up charges of possession of meth and uh, drug paraphernalia. Yes, sir. I'm going to appoint the public defender. I reviewed the paperwork, and I found probable cause for the charges. I'm going to stay the bonds at 1,000 on count one and 100 on count two. Do not possess or consume any illegal drugs. Do you understand? Your Honor, we would ask for a reduction in this case only because I am confident that a motion to suppress will be successful. They searched my client based off a... A uh, non-visible Brillo pad, pad found in the center console. My client was a passenger. They never should have gone into my client. They never should have searched my client. There was nothing that would have led my client to believe that there was illegal contraband inside the vehicle. That, that, that's a lockdown motion to suppress. Okay. And I'm sure Division 11 will agree with you, but for now, I'm going to stay with the bond I set. All right. Uh, Eric Bartley. Yes, sir. And state has no objection to no action on the album bond or Mr. Barkley's case. Okay, so he's got the warrant and the new law. 
today. Correct? Wow. Yes, sir. Not today. All right, hold on. Okay, sir. So we have a warrant that was issued, uh, and it's in 2021 CF 3976. And in that case, the uh, Judge Madrigal uh, found probable cause for possession of cocaine and tampering physical evidence. He set the bond at 2,500 on count one, 2,500 on count two. You're not to possess any drugs, alcohol, or other controlled substances without a prescription. No objection to 100 as um, onto the resisting and treating by treating it as a subsidiary. All right, now we're going to go. That is the warrant. All right, so hold on a second. That is the affidavit on that. And yeah. And then the uh, second one is a misdemeanor resisting officer without violence. Ran, uh, point the PD again and found probable cause. And state, you're saying on that one, knock it down from 500 to? Yes, Your Honor, just because they were serving the warrant to get another charge, I would just bring a subsidiary. All right, so a $100 bond on that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And then he is out on bond on sale and delivery of cocaine within a thousand feet of a child care facility. And that's in case 2020 CF 5335. Um, that case has court Tuesday in front yeah. of Judge Roche. Okay. Well, let's go back to the, uh, the main charges in that felony. Possession of cocaine and tampering and physical evidence. So I'm going to leave the bonds as they are. So it's a total of 5,000 with those conditions. Um, I'm revoking the bond uh, in that 2020 case in light of his new charges. And uh, we'll point the PD and you can schedule a hearing with the judge on that. Yes. I'm with those conditions. Did you get those conditions? Um, just no possession of alcohol or illegal drugs. Correct. Okay. And the bond is set at none on a on a case. Yes, correct. DeAndra Bowen? DeAndra yes, Bowen's behavior, Your Honor. He's what? Behavior. Okay, so we'll reset him for tomorrow. Wait, has he been reset before? No, Your Honor. All right, we'll reset him for tomorrow. Antonio Brown. How are you doing, Your Honor? How are you? Okay, so Mr. Brown, I've got two cases for you uh, in the 2021 CF 5653, uh, which is Division 14. You're charged with uh, possession of cannabis with intent to distribute possession of cannabis greater than 20 grams, uh, a possession of cannabis greater than 20 grams with a weapon, uh, possession of drug paraphernalia, uh, resisting officer without violence. I'm going to point the PD to represent you in both these cases. And um, I'm finding probable cause for all the charges. Let's talk about the bond. Your Honor, just as a state attorney's policy, the possession greater than 20 grams, it's 29.3. We're not going to file on those as the current climate is. So no objection to count one a thousand, ROR's to count two, ROR's to count three, ROR's to count four, and then a hundred as to count five. Those counts won't be filed on by our office, Your Honor. All right. So you're not filing on possession of cannabis greater than twenty grams with a weapon. Yeah, it's fifty grams is the threshold that FDLE can test for right now. Okay. Well, that's I'm not state attorney. You are. I understand, Your Honor. I don't make filing decisions. You do. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. All right, let's go do, uh, all right, we'll set the bond as indicated there. Do not possess any illegal drugs. I should not state them again. I usually all right, it's 1,000 count one. ROR counts two through four. And 100 on count five. Yes, Your Honor. All right, here's the other case, 2021 CF, and this is 5654. And this, no. We're going to make different orders than what I have. Okay. 
Back okay. to 5653. 5653, yes. $1,000 count. 1000 uh, ROR on 2, 3, and 4, and 100 on count 5. Plus, uh, do, don't possess illegal drugs. Thank you. All right, so back to the 5654 case of Division 20. So it's possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, possession of ammunition by a convicted felon, carrying a concealed firearm, possession of a firearm with altered serial number, armed sell and delivery of cocaine, possession of cocaine, possession of cocaine with intent to sell, deliver with a firearm, attempted destruction of evidence, resisting officer without violence, possession of drug paraphernalia, possession of a firearm and commission of a felony, and possession of a concealed weapon firearm by a convicted delinquent. So state's request would be to treat count seven as the primary at a $5,000 bond, count one, 150, count two, 150, count three, 150, count four, 150, count five, 150, count six, 150, count seven as I previously stated, count eight as 100, count nine as 100, count 10 as 100, count 11 at 150, count 12 at 150. 150. So count seven would be the primary, everything else is subsidiary. So that's no drugs. Tell me about Mr. Brown. Which, um, his last conviction was in 2019 for possession of firearm by a convicted felon. Um, that is his only adult conviction. The rest are um, all juvenile. He did not provide any contact numbers and refused to provide his address. So uh, pretrial services doesn't even know where Mr. Brown is residing at this time. No address and no emergency contact, Your Honor. Even though they were juvenile convictions, Your Honor, he is only 20 years old. They're more recent. I was just trying to explain. They're more recent to, in time than just being juvenile. Look, I'm not going to do what the state wants to do on this second one. I, I'm going with them on the five six five three. Uh, but if they want to to reduce the bonds on these very serious charges, um, I will instead of five thousand on count seven, it'll be ten thousand but I will keep it on the rest of the counts. And that means uh, don't possess or own any weapons, firearms, or ammunition, and do not consume or possess any alcohol or illegal drugs. Yes, Your Honor. Any questions? None from the defense. Thank you. Everything that the state said except for count five. Yeah. All right, let's go. Ashton, is it Cacho? How do you pronounce your name, sir? C A C H O. How do you say it, though? Uh, Cacho. C. Uh, Cacho. Okay, so I was close. Great. All right, sir. So you're here on a, a new law violation for burglary of a dwelling and criminal mischief. Yeah, I don't understand. Let, don't, don't talk about the facts of the case. The state may actually write down what you're saying. So. All right, so I'm going to point the PD to represent you. Guy holding the button. And um, I found probable cause for the charges. What can you tell me about young Mr. Cacho pre-trial? Your Honor, his last conviction was in January of this year for trespassing. Um, convictions consist of burglary of a structure, um, multiple violations of probation, trespassing, resisting um, cannabis. Uh, we were unable to verify any of his community ties. He's um, advised pretrial services that he is homeless and unemployed at this time. Um, I am inclined to keep the bond as is. No objection, Your Honor. 5,000 on count one, 250 on count two, no return to the scene. Your Honor, uh, I'd object just because my client's homeless. Any monetary bonds tantamount to... Um, <laughs> No bond at all. Additionally, Your Honor, for record purposes, we'd object to the finding of probable cause in this case. Where? Show me where. 
As far as the burglary, Your Honor, it, it's a trespass. There's no indication that there was criminal intent. There was nothing to indicate that. And I actually Googled this property. It, it's not, it almost looks abandoned. Uh, as far as what my client told the officer, he said he was there to use the restroom. I could see why someone would want to use the restroom at this place. Obviously, those facts aren't contained in the arrest affidavit, but ultimately, Your Honor, there's just no crime there within for a burglary. Well, I'm going to leave it as is. You can go to Division 19 to get the bond changed. Understood, Your Honor. All right, Billy Kaysen. Are you Mr. Kaysen? Yes, sir. All right, great. So I've got this warrant on a failure to appear on a possession of cocaine charge. And the judge in Division 19 uh, put it on a no bond status and to revoke your release. Uh, was he on uh, pretrial release? Judge, he's also out on bond for grand theft of a motor vehicle. Yes, I know that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but I was just talking about the new charge. The warrant, the warrant that was issued. The failure to appear? Yeah. Let me look into that for you, Your Honor. Okay, so that's the Orange County one. That's on the no bond. Then you got a uh, Polk County warrant. Three charges. And they're set on a no bond status. Criminal mischief, petty theft, uh, and uh, violation of probation on burglary of an unoccupied structure. So when you are released on the other ones, Polk County will pick you up on theirs. Now, you're also out on bond on a grand theft third degree of a motor vehicle in 2021 CF 4203. So I'm appointing the public defender to the two cases here in Orange County. Um, three was he? All right, so we don't know where he was on April 23rd when he failed to show. Nick. Went in jail in Polk or anywhere else. Do we have any proof of that? I'm telling you it's not. You lost contact with your attorney. They lost contact with you. But they spoke with your family. Okay, well, let's talk about on the failure to appear. It said it no bond. I am looking at it right now. Yes, Your Honor, we believe it should be stayed. That's what the judge, if they failed yeah. to appear, said it at. Yeah, the judges don't like you touching those at all. Some um, judges, Your Honor. I'm not going to touch the grand theft. No action, Your Honor. Huh? No action, Your Honor. No action on that because he's out on the, he got picked up on these warrants. All right? So you'll see the judge on the Orange County case. And then eventually you'll be transported to Polk at some point. All right? Okay. Diedrich, is it Crocker or Croker? Well, we don't know. We'll we just have to wait till tomorrow when we reset them. How about uh, Diaz? Are you Mr. Diaz? Good morning, sir. Yes, sir, I am. Okay. Grant that, Willis. Do we have Adele Walder? I can't hear you. What? We have a Del Water, Ashley Del Water, the Lauder, the Lauder. I, I don't see it. Hold on. He was before my Diaz. He was underneath. It's okay. Yeah, is I'm sorry. Well, let's go ahead. Huh? Ashley Del Water refused? Yes. All right, we'll reset her for tomorrow. So we're back to Mr. Diaz. I'm just looking at this correction. Okay, so Mr. Uh, Ariel Alfonso Diaz, the uh, uh, affidavit arrest was issued on the charges of trafficking and, and amphet amphetamines with a weapon greater than 28 grams, possession of firearm or ammunition by a convicted felon, grand theft third degree of motor vehicle, grand theft third degree of a firearm, and possession of firearm 
in the commission of a felony. Now, the trafficking with the weapon should be a, a no bond, but I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Twenty-eight grams, yeah. No, it would be a. Uh, hold on. Firearm customs. You're under no objection to reducing count one to fifty thousand dollars, and then leaving the remaining. Well, that's a, that would be at best without a weapon. All right, but go ahead, State. You tell me what you think you what the state wants to do on the case. The state wants to do just being consistent with what the judges do during the week. That's all. Well, I you know. Understand your sixty six judges, sixty six <laughs> understand ways to do things. <laughs> the state would very understand if Your Honor keeps it as is. All right. So, um, okay. So again, PD appointed found probable cause. Your Honor, he's not going to be able to afford a fifty thousand dollar bond. We'd be asking for a reduction for twenty thousand. I think that's more than enough. He takes care of his grandmother. If he's even able to come up with that money, it's more than enough to make sure that he sticks around. I hear what you're saying, but I'm I'm not going to do that. So I will reduce count one to fifty thousand. We'll stay the other bonds at one fifty, but he's out on bond on two other cases. On the one four three five two case, I'm showing that's closed in my system. As a 510. Okay, so that is the Dwillis? Yes. Third conviction. And then as. You're saying that's no longer active? That's what my, the, our case manager system is showing me on that case. What about the grand theft? You may have one second, John. So 14351. And I have that's a no information on that case as well, closed on 510. So I have two no infos on those cases. Okay, well then I will not revoke if you, that's what the state is representing concerning the charges they filed or didn't file. Didn't file, yeah. So you have your bond. Um, in addition, let me just be clear. Do not possess or own any weapons, firearms, or ammunition. Uh, no contact with the victim. No return to the scene. And do not possess or consume any alcohol or illegal drugs. Sir. Your Honor, you are taking no action on both of his out on bond cases, correct? Based on the representation by the state, we sure are. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Joseph Godby. Have a good day. Are you Mr. Godby? Yes, sir, I am. All right, Afternoon. sir. There good morning. Good morning, sir. There was a warrant issued on a possession of a controlled substance, a possession of drug paraphernalia. You failed to appear for your status hearing back on April 13th. So the judge uh, revoked your bond, and it's at zero at the present time. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you, and you can schedule a bond hearing with the judge. David Griffin. During the Your Honor, could we address Mr. Godby's case? He was incarcerated when the FDA was issued. Sure. If you, you know, I remember this happening all the time, the reason people couldn't appear. Where was he incarcerated? Orange, Osceola, where? Highlands County, Your Honor. Highlands County. Okay, so do you have confirmation he was in Highlands County Jail at the time he was supposed to be here? Should have been trans. You were transported here. Oh no no. Um, I I bond it out. I, I go to court on the seventeenth, which is two days from now at eight thirty. Um, I was just walking to the store. And okay, well, I don't have any proof that he was incarcerated, but it may well have been. We'll get after it, Your Honor. Thank you. Maybe I can contact a former classmate. They'll tell me. We reset <laughs> this for tomorrow, Your Honor. You think you can find some? I'll get something done. No objection to resetting it. For sure. The Why don't we come back tomorrow? We'll Thank talk you, about Honor. you, okay? All right. I'm going to go okay. find this. Give me this. We're resetting oh. Griffin. Yes, we're resetting Griffin. Yeah, so. uh, no, 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 no. 
Hold on. Wait, no. Now, where was the last one? Was it? They took Hill out of the courtroom. Did you still need Hill in here? No, no. It was, it was the, that was Hill, correct? Who was that? That was Godby. Godby. Godby, Godby. That's the one we're resetting. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Are you Mr. Griffin? Yes, sir. All right. Good morning, sir. Good morning. All right. Mr. David Griffin, um, you're here because there was a warrant issued for your arrest, and it's on a retail theft and resisting a merchant. The judge said it at $1,000 each for a total of 2000 with a no return to the scene of the incident, no weapons or firearms. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Now, he's out on bond on uh, a grand theft, third degree, in 2020 CF1237. I just want to see the... Zero, 2020 CF12372, and 2020 CF12413. I'm just trying to see the date, Your Honor. His arrest was back, it looks like, February 22nd of 21. This and he is, bonded out on April 5th. So this is an April 29th, 2021 case, this current one. So that means he would have been out on conditions of release while committing this allegation. Are you asking for the offense dates for the on. bond cases? For tomorrow? Yes. Offense date of, uh, for 2020 CF1241 was 3-8-2019. Offense date for 2020 CF-12372 was 4 2019 Offense date for 2020 CF-1237-322-2019. All right, so he was out on conditions of release, Your Honor, at the time he, the allegation that he committed the case, uh, the warrant case from today, because that was an April 29th date. All right, so are you... Asking they be revoked, Your Honor. Huh? That they be revoked? He yes. continues to commit thefts. Okay, so we're going to point the PD on your warrant. Uh, we're staying the bonds at 1000 each. Yes, Your Honor. With the conditions that I said before, no return to the scene, no weapons or firearms. And I'm revoking your bond in all three of the cases I just mentioned. You can, it will, we'll point the PD if you don't already have them, and you can talk to them about getting a bond. Thank you, Your Honor. Donald Hapson. Is that you, Mr. Hapson? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. All right, so I have a warrant here on a failure to appear at your status hearing back on April 13th on a possession of cocaine and possession of drug paraphernalia. The, the judge revoked your bond uh, or forfeited your bond as a, as a result of that failure to appear. I'm going to point the PD if you don't already have the PD. Um, your Honor. Yeah. If I may. Um, the detainer that the defendant is out on bond for, um, it he actually has failed to appear, so the judge presiding over that case has already issued a warrant. Okay, um, so we don't need to touch it. That's correct, Your Honor. Okay, so let's talk about these failure to appears. Um, I know the judges typically like to leave them at a dope on status till they see them. Yes, Your Honor. So I'm going to leave them at no bond status. So I'm not going to touch the other case, but you'll need to go see the judge. On that warrant. Jeff uh, in Reesby. Is that you, sir? Yes, sir. All right. So we're here, and this is a, uh, it's a, it's a warrant for a violation of pretrial release. And uh, it's on your trafficking in 300 plants or 25 pounds of cannabis. And the judge set the bond at $5,000. And I'm going to point the PD, if you don't already have the PD in that case. And uh, so the bond will be set at the 5000 uh, Oh, but he's not here. You, you don't, we're not going to point the PD because you have Mr. Ali on yours, correct? Yeah, so just let him know. I was saying, um, can I bond out today? Yes, you have a five thousand dollar bond. All right, thank you so much, sir. Okay, Your Honor. Hold on. He's incarcerated on other revoked cases. He's he has, may have bond on this case, but he's on no bond on other. So cases. it's like Hotel California. Do you like the Eagles, the band? 
I didn't hear you, sir. Do you like the band, The Eagles, the song Hotel California? I've never heard of it. Well, I want you to listen to it because there's a part that says you can check out anytime you want, but you can never leave. So can you post a bond on this? Yes. Will that get you out? No. Why not? Because you've got other cases. So you'll love the song. Rich LaPont or LaPoint. All right. Rich LaPoint. You're charged with fraud, right? That's what. All right. What happened to Rich LaPoint? Bonded, Bonded. Good for him. Rod Lawson, bonded. Ah, oh, good people. Mackenzie Maddox, bonded. Are we up to Miss Jolene? Is it Moroccan? American. American? American. All right. How are you doing today, ma'am? I'm doing fine. All right. Well, let's go over this with you, okay? We've got a couple things we got to deal with. So we got some warrants. And we got a misdemeanor warrant in Division 61. And it's uh, you, it's alleged you failed to appear for your plea and sentencing on April 23rd on your resisting without violence in your battery. Yeah. Uh, did, well, hold on. You don't want to talk too much about the case. I'm going to appoint the PD to represent you. And your bail is $100 plus ROR. Okay? On that one. And then, huh? Oh, you have $100. Okay, on 6806. 6806, okay. correct. Thank you. So it's essentially $100 on count one and ROR on count two. All right? Now, in the other case, uh, it's a, a felony, Division 17. You failed to appear for your plea hearing on March 8th, and it was a petty theft with two prior convictions. And uh, they revoked your release, but they put you on ROR on that one. Yeah. So, again, we'll point PD if you don't already have, but you basically have two ROR's and $100. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Alonzo Maximi. What did he say? You have to post bonds because you missed court in one of your cases. What if I don't have bonds? We're going to have to file a bond motion. Okay. We'll handle it. Don't worry. All right, are you Alonzo Maxine? When we file the yes, bond motion, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Your Honor, uh, defense will make a PC challenge on this one. The officer says the gun was in plain view. Okay, so we're going to, so Mr. Uh, Maxine, you're charged with carrying a concealed firearm. Yes, sir. So I'm going to appoint the PD to represent you. Go ahead. Uh, Your Honor, the officer says the firearm's in plain view. I don't know how they could say it's concealed. State? Maybe improper exhibition of a firearm. May I have a moment, Your Honor? Well, I don't know. Defense, you have the. Well, it's carrying a concealed firearm. No, no. I was trying to see what the lesser included if it, of that. Which is possession of a firearm? Yes, I just want. I was trying to look up the statute, Your Honor. I would say that it's not even improper display until after they took him out. Well, he's the sole occupant. It was a visible firearm. It was a stolen firearm. That's not the lesser included. It's only attempt is the lesser included. No. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, that was a prohibited place. May I have a moment, Your Honor? So we got the wrong statute. And he didn't have a concealed carry license. It's still attempt. I'll leave in the court's discretion, Your Honor. Do you have, what did you say about the uh, lesser that it's not? Yeah, the only lesser is attempted. There's no like improper exhibition of a firearm or anything like that as a lesser for that 
for carrying concealed firearm. Okay, well, you know what? I had to go to the Florida jury instruction. Let me look at it again. You, have, you do? That's, yeah, I, I just looked up to the Florida jury instruction, and the only lesser included in that is an attempt. That's why I wanted to go back and check it. However, your honor, his out on bond case, he we have filed an information on that case, and it has a trial, it's a pretrial, excuse me, on June the 29th. For the court's knowledge, he does also have two open cases in Hillsborough as well. Well, what I'll do is I'll find probable cause for uh, Florida Statute 790.053, which is open carrying of a weapon. It's a second degree misdemeanor. And I'll set the bond at $250 on that. I don't know what the state's going to do with charging decisions, but I'll set the bond on it. That's the good news. The bad news is in 2020 CF 14049, you're uh, out on bond on burglary or conveyance and criminal mischief. I'm revoking that bond. And you can go talk to the uh, judge on that. I do not possess or own any weapons, firearms, or ammunition. Did you get that? 790.053. Okay. All right, uh, James Moore. Is that you, Mr. Moore? Yes. Okay, so you've got this warrant that's on a, uh, a failure to report to the sheriff and FDLE, and then you failed to appear for this uh, status hearing on that charge. Well, hold on a second. You failed to appear for the status hearing on the charge on April 23rd. The judge revoked your bond and set it at zero. I'll appoint the PD to represent you. You don't want to talk about the facts case to me. Why don't you talk to your PD real quick? Your Honor, um, well, I'll talk to him later about this, Mr. Moore. Yeah, you're going to have to go to the judge on that because you failed to appear on that charge. So we're going to keep it at, at, at uh, no bond. It's your job to stay in touch with your attorney, unfortunately. You have to call them every day. Dina Mullins. It, okay, you need to stay in touch with your attorney, though. That's your job. I'm sorry. Talk to the judge that's got the case. Have a good day. Gina Mullins. Yes, sir. All right, Ms. Mullins, uh, you're here, and the charges are uh, possession of uh, drug paraphernalia, resisting officer without violence, and possession of a controlled substance. So I'm going to point the PD to represent you. Thank you, Your Honor. State will request that you leave the bond set as is with no um, no. No drugs or alcohol. The out on bond case, it was a March 27th arrest, and we still have not made a charging decision on it. So what are you saying? Say you don't want me to revoke that one? No, Your Honor. Even though it's a drug charge? It is, but we've had, obviously. You have what? We've had six weeks, and we've not made a charging decision. Okay, so we'll do that. I won't revoke your case you're out on bond because the state hasn't made a charging decision, but I will stay the bonds at 500, 500, and 1,000. Do not possess for consuming any illegal drugs. Your Honor, would the court consider... So the bondsman's going to charge her $100 for the two $500 bonds. If we could just set it at 100 so she could pay those herself and not potentially get that back or at least have that go to her fines, 
if she please later, but yeah, I'll do that, but I'll revoke the bond in the other one. So it's either way you want it. No, no, not revoke the bond, but set these. Two. Oh no, I heard you. I'll, I'll set them lower, but then I'll revoke the bond in the outstanding case. Not to what the state We can leave them as is your honor. Okay. There you go. Whatever you want. No action in the bond. State. Yeah. <laughs> Terrius Pope. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Oh, your Honor, good uh, afternoon. I'm we waive sorry. the formal reading of the charges in this case. Okay. Thank I'll you, point the PD to represent you. So, um, this warrant is on a no bond status. <clears throat> so, um, state, do you have any comments on whether we should? Touch this charge, which they waived the reading of. May we, we, we have one moment, Your Honor? Yeah. I believe the way it's charged, it is not a PBL, so the defendant is entitled to conditions of release. We'd ask for no contact with the victim, no weapons, no firearms, no drugs, no alcohol. Um, but I believe it's charged as the F2. Um, and not a PBL. Because it's number it's a five. One one sub five. One one sub five. Yeah, so F2. Yes, Your Honor. And we set the bond. All right, go ahead. I'm listening. Defense. I've got the arrest affidavit, so if you want to go over that as well. What can you afford? Not what can I get it to, what can I afford? Your Honor, my client's indicated he could afford $100 in bond. We'd be asking for the court to set something. I'd say I, I understand that's way lower than the court's probably inclined to do. We could set it at 5000 in this case. Uh, priors? His prior convictions consist of failure to register a motor vehicle, Willis resisting without and possession of marijuana. Um, arrest history is similar, no motorcycle license, failure to register. Okay. So, so nothing related to what he's charged with? No, Your Honor. Okay. Stay? I have nothing else further, Your Honor. Well, do you have a recommendation on bond? I don't, Your Honor. We'll leave it in the court's discretion. All right, I'm going to set it at 5,000, no contact, direct or indirect with the victim. Um, you are not to be in the presence of any minor, whether related to you or not, uh, without adult supervision present during the pendency of this case. All right. We'd ask for no drugs, no alcohol, or weapons. Oh, sure, we can add that. Don't consume any alcohol or illegal drugs and do not possess or own any weapons or firearms or ammunition. All right, uh, Mr. Ramos Sancincio. Sorry, I did not say that well. You have a bond. How do you say your name, sir? Dan Ramos, the owner. All right, so it's Ramo, and then it's hyphen, Sensencio. It's John Carlos Ramos, and then Asensio. Okay, great. But I, it's okay. I can call you Mr. Uh, Ramos. Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so um, here's what we're dealing with. We have a misdemeanor charge of possession of cannabis less than 20 grams, and then we have. Um, Traffic charges for fleeing and attempting to elude a law enforcement officer with the lights and sirens engaged. Reckless driving, which is also a criminal charge. And then a no motorcycle license. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you in these two cases. May I have one second, John? In the 2021 MM3262 case, the state will file a no information. I'll e-file if that's okay, Madam Clerk, or do you want the physical copy? All right. ROR in light of that. 
in the notes. Okay. Okay. So just for my edification, the state attorney is not pursuing cannabis charges to what extent? 50 grams is the threshold. Up to 50 grams? Yes. So anything less than 50 grams, we're not going You're for. You're not going after. Correct, Your Honor. Okay. All right. So we're back to the uh, other three charges in the felony case. So we pointed to PD. Uh, I've reviewed and found probable cause for the charges. Um, I'm going to stay the bonds at 1500 and 500 Do not drive without a valid driver's license, whether it's by motorcycle or car. Now, normally the fleeing and looting is like a no bond until you see the judge, and then it, it can be set. But in light of everything else, I'll keep it at 1000 all right? Thank you, Your Honor. All right. So don't let me down. All right, Jeffrey Simmons. Is that you, sir? Yes, sir. All right. So I guess these are additional charges. He's been seen already. And it's uh, two counts of burglary of a conveyance. I'm going to appoint the PD to represent you. So what were the other cases he had? Um, Your Honor, he's currently incarcerated on other cases for burglary of a structure, criminal mischief, petty theft, loitering, and burglary. Okay. So I'm going to find probable cause. I'm going to stay the bonds at $1,500 each. No return to the scene. And do not possess or consume any alcohol or illegal drugs. Do you understand? All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Tomoko Smith. <clears throat> Yes, step on up. All right, you're Miss, uh, is it Tomiko Smith? Yes. Yes, okay, great, all right. So there was a warrant issued because you failed to appear for your competency status hearing back on May 12th, and the judge uh, revoked the bond on your burglary of a structure. Uh, you're also out on bond on some matters, but if you don't have the PD already on that one, I'm going to appoint the PD. Um, I'm going to leave it a no bond status so you can go see the judge in Division 14 and talk about what happened, but I won't touch your other bonds, all right? Mr. Kendall Stevenson. Your Honor, Mr. Stevenson bonded. All right. Jimmy. We'll reset. Oh, hold on. All right, we're up to the misdemeanors. I've previously conveyed all offers to defense. Uh, we have, no, don't we have non pleable ones? But they're pleable, Your Honor. Okay. I and mean, they say non pleable, they're failing to appear, so. Okay. So, I guess we got uh, Jose Calderon. Sir. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Where's Jose? Calderon Lubin. What did I do? Not Jose. Inmate number two one zero one one four two nine. Calderon bonded. Thank you. Good. Yeah. So you can pause. Okay. How about uh, Kyle Pollan? Are you Kyle Pollan? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> oh, he does? Yes. Okay. So um, you have the Regional Conflict Council's office representing you that you had a, a DV battery and you allegedly failed to appear for your status hearing back on April 9th. So the judge. Um, revoked your bond and set a bond at four thousand yeah. dollars. So get with your regional conflict council to uh, schedule a bond hearing. Yeah. That's on that one. And then the other case is a uh, arrest for new law charges of resisting officer without violence and uh, providing false ID to a law enforcement officer. Um, I'll have to appoint the conflict council on that as well, I assume. Or can I appoint the PD now on a? separate charge he doesn't have it because don't you have to file your paperwork to get out yeah we have uh, point the PD 
and they can work through the system on it. All right, and uh, I'm finding probable cause for the charges. I'll stay the bonds at 500 and 100. Okay, so let's move on. All right, uh, so hopefully we've got some people bonding out soon. Khalid Johnson. Bonded, Your Honor. There you go. Leonard Miller. You don't have the name? Nope. I'll give it to you. All right. M8 number 2101410. Miller bonded. Lenny Narius. No, no, just the one. Talk to. 2101407. Bonded. Bonded. All right. You're moving quick, Judge. Now you're just. Well, it's off record. Okay, uh, Kalen Regis. Yes, sir. Oh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I'm good sorry. Good afternoon, sir. All right, so here is a situation where you apparently failed to appear on your uh, no valid driver's license charge. Yes, sir. In county court, and they revoked your bond and uh, or your pretrial conference, and they set it at five hundred dollars. The offer is a withhold credit for time served or ROR. Your Honor, he uh, indicated to me that he would like to try to get his license. Do an ROR then. Thank you, Your Honor. Do not drive without a valid driver's license. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, could you appoint us in this case, please? You are appointed. Thanks, Judge. Thank All right. I know this one's bonded out because I can just tell. Juan Santos Rosales. Bonded. See? I could just tell the way you were looking. I get Mark Vincent. Never heard of him before? All right. Hold on, Judge. Put it on the record. Okay. It's 2101425. Bonded. Bonded. All right. Okay, here we go. Miss Nandy Braithwaite. Yes. How are you doing today, Miss Braithwaite? Uh, upset, scared, and tired. You know, that's to be expected, though, when one is in jail, so I understand. No objection to ROR. Okay, so you're here on a charge of criminal mischief, less than a 1,000. Point the PD to represent you, find public defender for you, and we will set it at ROR, no return to the scene. Rick Turner. Okay. Sarah Doyle. Your Honor, she refused. Reset for tomorrow. Seth Jowers. Bonded. Wilfredo Acosta. How are you, Mr. Acosta? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Okay, so here's what we got. We got these new charges for petty theft with a prior theft conviction. And then we have a uh, possession of drug paraphernalia. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you on that, Mr. Acosta. So, state has no objection to leaving count one as is and ROR is to count two. We're not going to file on count two. However, state would ask that the bond be revoked in the 2021 MM1388 case and the 2020 CF11424 case. The defendant continues to commit theft related offenses. I, I agree. I will. Uh, uh, 
stay the bond account, one petty theft with the prior, and then we'll ROR the possession of drug paraphernalia. But we are revoking the bonds of the, on the uh, misdemeanor felony on case the state just did because you were out on bond when you picked up this new charge. And so under Florida law, we were allowed to revoke. You can go back to the judge for that case, though, and they can uh, potentially reinstate bonds. But today, not. Janad Wallace. Your Honor, could we be appointed in that case as well? With the first oh, one? I'm sorry, he has a private attorney. I apologize. All right, here's Janad. They don't know who he is. 210 Any? Wallace? Yes. Bonded. Bonded. Great. Okay, so we're doing out of county warrants now? Yes. Okay, Danny Alston. Is that you, Mr. Alston? All right. So the great county of Duval, Florida's largest city, Jacksonville, would like to see you because they have some uh, warrants issued on dealing in stolen property with a $2,503 bond. That's interesting. And then a false verification of ownership or on pawnbroker transaction form. The bond on that's 5003 and then there's a count three grand theft that's 503. So you're going to be held until Jacksonville comes down and picks you up. And if they don't pick you up, you'll be back here and we'll let you out one way or the other. Okay. And correct me if I'm wrong. He had bonds on all those, right? Yeah, I just read them. There were the 20 bonds. You got court in Jacksonville. You got to go yeah. handle it. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Jeremy DeWitt. Did I say that right? Yes, sir. Yes, Great. Sir. Okay. So on yours, sir, we have uh, warrants, and uh, they're out of Osceola. So they're going to probably pick you up on Monday? Uh, yes, Your Honor. They're actually uh, scheduled to pick me up on Tuesday. Okay. There you go. All right. So uh, unfortunately, the three counts for the warrants, there are no bond. So you'll be held until they pick you up. And if they don't pick you up, we'll be happy to discuss with you. Now, did he just have the one, or did he have more? Okay. All right, sir. Your Honor, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, if you could please, I, can I get the charging affidavits, please, so I could read those? Because although uh, I don't know what the situation is, um, huh? I, I've been in jail for a month and a half, so I don't really understand how can I have charges coming. Do you all object to being given them? What? He wants the charging affidavit. I would like to read those because I've been in jail for a month and a half. Uh, I was on bond. They revoked my bond with a new charge, but that charge was dropped. And we were in the process of reinstating my bonds. <laughs> Three days after my charges being dropped, all of a sudden, these popped up. And but do I, you have a PD uh, or private? Oh, I have a private attorney. All right, you need they to get in touch with them. He has That's what they do. approximately they 10 or 11 other cases that he's currently incarcerated. Oh, you got a bunch of di different cases that are yes. keeping you. Right. So they don't have to tell you about your warrant. They just served you with it once you resolved your other case. Okay. So that's what happens. Can I at so, least get the charging affidavit so I could read them to see what they're saying? I am i can't even give you an aspirin in the jail. So whatever the jail says you're allowed to have, that's fine. You're, I don't have any copies. Your Honor. They said yeah. I'm allowed to as long as they print them out here. I, you need to get with your private attorney. Yeah, okay. All right. You tell them. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good day. Yep. All right. Uh, Louis Soto. Okay, Mr. Soto, uh, we have warrants here, and uh, they're out of uh, Lee County, and uh, they are for criminal use of uh, personal identification information, fraudulent application for a license, and perjury in a, an official proceeding. Now, it says bond to be set by first appearance judge, and... Uh, if subject has local charges and when a hold is placed for our agency. If you can't bond, advise when ready for pickup. So I don't remember dealing with out of county warrants setting bond for people. Typically it would be set at the IAs in Lee County. Yes, Your Honor. So we're gonna we're gonna tell them. We already told them, right, pretrial? Yes, Your Honor. And they're going to get a van together and come pick you up. And if they don't, you'll come back here and we'll take care of it, okay? How long do they have to come get me, sir? Well, what, what are y'all doing? We used to do about seven days when I was here. Yeah, I want to say if it wasn't, well, I don't know, because of COVID. Things have been very yeah. wonky because of COVID. 
But usually I used to go about seven days and I'd bring you back. That busy and at day. two in the morning, I'd have them let you go out of the building. Is that business days or weekends count? Oh my gosh, how professional. I don't know. Okay. But if they'll bring you back if they don't come get you. We're not going to let you languish here. All right, so good luck. Alberto, uh, is it Valley? All right, how are you, sir? I'm good, how are you? Great. So Seminole County's got a warrant, and it's uh, a, a violation, alleged violation of your possession of controlled substance, driving under the influence. And Judge Nelson set the bond at $1,500. Yes. So you can post your bond or wait till Seminole comes to pick you up, okay? Do you have a bond? You got a bond. All right, Robert Lurie. Seminole's, Seminole's close to, they'll work with you. Yeah, call a big, big bondsman, big bondsman company. Are you Robert Lurie? Yes, sir. Okay. So it looks like we have a couple of things we got to deal with you on. Yeah, okay. So you've been charged with driving under the influence. And I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you on that. Now you have a $500 bond on that, but you've got a VOP, I guess it's no bonding you. So I'm going to find probable cause, point to PD. Don't possess or consume any alcohol or illegal drugs on that charge. Now, you've got uh, a violation of probation uh, when they arrested you on the DUI, and that was on the, uh, the, the uh, fraud offense that you were on probation. But it's out of Lake County, this VOP, and it's on a no-bond basis. And so, what are they going to do? Are they going to make him do the DUI first before they send him back? If he doesn't bond out, then yes. He would have to bond out on the DUI, and then they could transport him okay. to Lake. So, did you hear that? You put the 500 up on the DUI, they'll, move, they'll take you back to Lake to take care of that. Okay. But they're not going to move you there until you take care of the DUI. Okay. But, don't listen to me, I'm a judge. Talk to an attorney. All right, Dion Turner. Strategically, it's better for you to go get the VOP bond. Yeah. Okay, come this way. Okay, is that you, Mr. Turner? Yes, sir. All right, so Judge Blackman, a couple of days ago, issued a uh, no bond warrant on a uh, violation of probation right. on your charge. And we're going to point the PD to represent you. You're going to have to go in front of Judge Blackman and ask him to potentially give you a bond. All right? Yes, sir. All right. Your Honor, if I may. Yes. Although the defendant is currently incarcerated on a no bonds um, warrant, he does need to be advised of his reporting requirements due to his status. Oh, so you know how you have to report to all those various places? So the jail is your home right now. So you have to tell them of the change of address. Oh, so report to the sheriff's office, report to the DMV within 48 hours of your release from here, okay? So you go handle it. All right, we're almost there. Today, but you need to report. We got to go. Michael Madison. He offers a withhold credit for time served. All right, so it's an open container violation. He offers withhold time served. On behalf of the city. Huh? On behalf of the city. Yeah, behalf of the city. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Madison would like to accept that offer, Your Honor. All right. Get him a uh, plea sheet. And let's deal with a Nicholas Wilkerson while he's do reviewing that. I'm going to get you a plea form right now. Nicholas Wilkerson. Is that you, Mr. Wilkerson? Yes, sir. Okay. So we've got uh, uh, out-of-county violation of probation. So let's take a look at this. It was, um, hold on. Hold on. I'll point the PD to represent you. All 
This is down in Dade County. Wow, they have GPS monitoring. We haven't yeah. had that in a while, have we? No, since, <laughs> since yeah. the incident, yeah. Since my clerk was in high school. <laughs> have you ever seen what the, the federal system does on monitoring? I have not. You ought to hook up with them, and, and, and it's kind of interesting. The uh, modern technology they're using. You know, I'm sure we could do it. We could do it. It's just we got to make a decision. Yes. I mean, they're they're doing Nibia holds. I mean, I, I thought we weren't doing Nibia holds we're anymore. Doing, not in, we're not doing Nibia holds anymore. I know, but this is no. I'm sorry, the Dade County. Oh, Dade just, County just is. did a Nibia hold oh, on him. So yeah, no. I don't know what that's about. We're not doing that here. I didn't think anybody was doing it. I didn't think so either. Yeah. All right, I got to make sense of all this one. Oh yeah, there's the uh, the GPS officer. She's the one that used to work here in Orange County. It's from it's in. More sunshine in Miami. Okay, so you were on a community control down in Dade, and you were in GPS monitoring. It's alleged that you violated it. So you're on a no bond status uh, on this, and I assume Dade County is going to come pick them up. But if they don't, which is probably a good chance they won't, knowing Dade County, where I'm from, born and raised, um, they probably won't get you. But if, if they do, they will. If not, we'll bring you back in here. Is there anything else on that? Oh, Your Honor. Okay. So is uh, Michael Madison ready to go? Okay. What? He has credit for two days, Your oh, Honor. This was, I don't believe he's on community control. I'm sorry. I thought that that was what was being discussed before. Um, as far I, as this is, he has a pending charge, and they put him on the electronic monitoring. In Dade County, though. Not on probation? No. No. <laughs> Okay, so they put him on. Um, on his case, they put him on. He, he filed a motion to reduce to bail, and he was placed on house arrest and GPS monitoring. And. It looks as if there was an on view violation of probation because he got stopped and it was and they confirmed that. So it's it's going to be a Dade County case no matter what. Am I missing something? No, Your Honor. That's my right. understanding. OK, let's go. Uh, Michael we Madison. have a bond, Your Honor. Huh? Is there a bond? No, case? no bond. Your Honor, can we set a bond? I, I don't believe this is charged properly. Unless someone could confirm he's on community control. I think I think he's out on bond on a case, and they reduced it. It wasn't community control. Okay, so as far as getting a, a bond in this case. I believe Miami's the best place suited to get a bond. Yeah, he's going to have to take it up with his attorney down there. Just, just say that he's out on bond. See, I'm in charge of violating it. So. Yeah. I get that, and I'm trying to. Yeah. Okay, so to be clear, I have him on the misdemeanor pleable docket, as in these are misdemeanors that he's being held no bond on for. That was the error, which is why we wait. Wait until well, there's an amended affidavit. They were getting the here. It's an amended affidavit showing. Okay. So there was no. This is what the officer just dropped off. Yeah. Which is different from what. But we don't have any misdemeanor pleable for him, do we? No, that was an error, correct? That was an error. Okay. The, the arresting officer did an unarrest on the two original charges that he was brought in on. The statutes for out of county are very limited in our system. So the closest thing that we have in our system is a violation of out of county probation. So. Yes. Okay. So let's move on. Mr. Uh, Madison, did you re review the plea form carefully? Oh. Okay, well, that was the point we passed you over, so go ahead.
There's somebody else speaker. Real yeah. interpreter present. Allo, bonsoir. Okay, great. This is Judge Jordan down in Orlando. How are you? I am great, thank you. All right, so what is your name? Uh, my name is Nadege. Hold on a second. And I'm a Haitian Creole interpreter. Can you spell your name for me? Yeah, hold on one second. We got some feedback here. Sure. So uh, could you tell us your name again? My name is Nadege. And I'll be your Haitian Creole interpreter today. And your last name? It's um, Edmondson, E-D-M-O-N-S-O-N, -E and I do have an ID number if you need it. You need it? No, we don't need it. Now, you want the name of the defendant? And could you spell your name for me, please, Judge? Yes, so it's John Jordan, J-O-R-D-A-N. Thank you. Yes, please. Okay, her name is Peggy... And I'll say Saint Juice, S A I N T J U S T E, but I'm sure you'll correct me on that. <laughs> Saint Juice, that's okay. Are you ready to go? Yes, I will introduce myself. Just let me know when, please. Okay, we're gonna go now, and I'll start talking, and then pause so you can interpret. Okay? Sure. Okay. Are you Peggy Saint Juice? Est-ce que vous c'est Peggy Saint-Just? Oui. Yes. Ma'am, you've been charged with the following crimes. Madame, yo chargé de crimes qui pour le suivre, nous pour le dire. Okay. Burglary of a structure with an assault or battery therein. Could you please repeat for the interpreter? Burglary of a structure with an assault or battery therein. Um, vole avec un bagay qui te nomme un. Criminal mischief greater than a thousand dollars. Criminal mischief plus que mille dollars. And trespass on a property after warning. Trespass, trespassé non propriété. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. And Any comments on probable cause? Yes, Honor. Your Honor, we'd argue that there's no PC for the burglary based on the facts that she was trying to push to get past her. She was already inside the house. All this may have escalated into a battery later. It, it, there was no, in, no burglary if she entered, and that's what they need to prove. This well, and we're not using the interpreter right now, but she came back around the back and was pushing in. She had left and was trying to get back in, allegedly. Correct, Your Honor, but there's still no crime there with them. She was trying to get her checked. Just I'll wait for the interpreter, Your <laughs> Okay. So, uh, public defender doesn't think there's probable cause for count one. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead, Madam Interpreter. So, public defender la pense que ou gon cause probable pour compte un. State? Your Honor, state would disagree and believe there is PC. However, we are not asking that she be held at no bond. Madam Interpreter. Um, state law pas d'accord que de ça défend de l'indien et puis on veut pour au Québo sans ou pas gain bond. State request a $7,500 bond as to count one, a $150 as to count two, a $100 as to count three. Um, this is the interpreter. Judge, could you please ask State to repeat? Yeah, seven seventy five hundred on count one. Okay. I have that seventy five hundred and what else? One hundred and fifty on count two and a hundred dollars on count three. 
So yo yo di ap kebo, l'état ap kebo, bon nou ap 7500 dollars pour compte 1, 150 dollars pour 2 et puis 100 dollars pour 3. No contact with the victim, no return to the scene, no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons, no firearms. Ou pas supposé ge aucun contact avec victime nan, ou pas supposé approcher, ou pas supposé utiliser drogue, ou pas supposé utiliser zam, ou pas gen supposé utiliser un lien qui gen avec zam, ou bien couteau ne pot salye. Pidi. Did you catch that, Madam Interpreter? No, I did not. Okay, so the, the, the public defender requested a uh, reduced bond. You can interpret that. Defender public one, li font demand pour yo reduit bond one. Okay, based on my reading of the affidavit, um, I'm going to set the bond as follows. Basé sur Samuel Lee dans l'affidé vide, nous prenons combien de bonnes uh, 7,500 on count one, 150 on count two, and 100 on count three. 7,500 dollars dans le compte 1, 150 dollars dans deux compte 2, et 100 dollars dans le compte 3. And no contact whatsoever with the victim. Ou pas supposé que contact du tout, du tout avec victime, non. Aucun contact. No return to the scene. Ou pas supposé retourner sous scène, non. Do not consume or possess any alcohol or illegal drugs. Ou pas supposé consumer ou bien ou pas supposé gagner sous non possession alcool ou bien en ken drogue qui illégal and do not possess or own any weapons firearms or ammunition ou pas supposé gagner ou bien en possession de aucun arme qui ou arme qui avec balle qui avec immunition do you understand ma'am est-ce qu'on comprend Oui, mais est-ce que m'a pas parlé? Um, can I talk? Well, you have I, to listen to me too. We don't want to talk about the facts of the case because everything's being recorded and it could adversely affect your position. Nous pas besoin parler pour de facteurs pas parce que tout bagage a enregistré et il est pas bon pour vous. Bagage a enregistré. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Interpreter. Thank you for using our services. Is there anything uh, else? Okay. That's it. Okay, thank you. Have a great day. All right. That is all I have before the court, ma'am. Be excused. Yes, ma'am.